And we're live. Welcome to the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast. I am your host, Chris Kirkwood, screen name Kirk Dees, here with my two esteemed colleagues, one uh, who blew us off last week. We'll, uh, we'll start with him, Mr. Uh, Johnny AirPods over there run from Run Pure Sports, JSU Rab. What's going on? Not much. I uh, blew you guys off. I had a uh, wedding that I uh, couldn't get out of last week out in Jacksonville, so it was a good time. My wife's cousin got married, but uh, back, uh, ready to do the uh, podcast with you boys this week, but I'm not going to lie. It was a fun time. I won't, I won't lie. Unacceptable. Unacceptable to leave your comrades hanging for a week. I go to Florida. I lost. I, I did. I freaking smashed UFC bets. I think that was last week. Everything's a blur. But I got smoked in NFL. I got. I did a little uh, fancy play syndrome. I think I don't even remember what last week feels so long ago. After because we already had the Thanksgiving slate. Uh, what about what's up, Bobby at Bobby Gomes DFS? Bobby Gomes million dollar yeah. maker winner. One of the OGs, uh, football extraordinaire. What's going on? Uh, nothing. Had a good uh, – last week was good. And then Thanksgiving yesterday, I think I was in like second in the Millie after the end of the second games, which wasn't the worst spot to be in. Wish I got that CeeDee Lamb touchdown. Didn't get it. Still with the Stevenson and uh, basically Aguilar hitting – my team kind of fell down the board, but it was expected with all that chalk in the Minnesota game. So, I don't know. On to this week. Ready to get into it. Looks like we're having an interesting slate. Happy to be on with the both of you. Bobby is filled with energy today. Yeah, I mean, right? God, I mean, no, he's he, bringing he, this room up right now. Dude, he's been like this for three weeks now, so this is not you, – you just missed him last week. but uh, I, I must have. I must have just missed all the energy flowing out. You know, what, you know what the people are saying? It has something to do with Bitcoin. I don't know. That's what Uh-oh. they're saying. <laughs> Bobby Bitcoin's back? Is that what you're saying? Bobby Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's back? Bitcoin's going to survive. Gonna it's going to be all right. We're going we're gonna to be all right in the streets. Bobby Bitcoin has been everyone's, trying to get everyone's to buy Bitcoin for the last year and a half. Me. I'll just say that right now. For the last year and a half, this man is longer than that. trying to get me into Bitcoin. Longer I'll, I'll than that, I feel now. like two years, three, like when was at Toronto least a year, Club? no, like a year and a half or something like that. Uh, He's been telling me after every time after I have a big score, I'll get a text or a call from Bobby, like, yo, man, you gotta check out Bitcoin, you gotta get into this Bitcoin. I'm like, eh, it's not my thing. I'm, I'm good. He, he would have had yeah. you, he would have got a referral fee, referred you over to FTX, had a nice exchange for you, <laughs> and uh, you'd, you'd be uh. I did not use FTX. You'll be you'll be grinding these uh, bankruptcy cases, hoping that you'll get <laughs> something that will flow back, flow back down to you. I thought you said you did use FTX. No, no, no. Oh, I used, I used the, the the site every DFS player uses that uses BTC. I used what BlockFi and got absolute. And, I didn't get like I have enough Bitcoin like to where I'm. I lost like four coins. So it's it is oh, what that's it, is. it. That's it. This is just four coins. Yeah. It seems We're like good. a lot. Um, yeah, it seems like a good amount. That's all right, though. I mean, he just wins another million. He's going to get him back in DFS this week, so it's all good. I better fucking oh, – I can't swear. Yesterday, I was hoping I was going to get it all back. Wait, you can't swear on this podcast? You can do no. whatever the hell you want. You, you can, can do whatever, whatever you want. There's no oh, rule. I was going to say, that's some damn bull- – Okay, I got a question for you guys. Speaking of swearing, I need a, I need a, I need a panel here – of non-biased people because I had a bunch of biased people in the chat when I did our our Wednesday Thanksgiving show with Tony and Tambo. And Tambo wouldn't give a damn opinion on it. He just wanted to sit there. He likes to stay in the middle. He doesn't like conflict. He sits on the fence. He sits on the fence. He does. I love Tambo. I love Tambo. He's a great guy. He just wants to be friends with everyone. He wants everyone to be chill. That's cool. But I like arguing. I like arguments. I like to get into arguments. I like to win arguments, as you guys know. So it just yes or no is fine. Is the word damn a swear? Like if I no. just say damn, no. is no. it a swear? Fuck no. Fuck no. Thank you. Our friend Big T thinks that damn is – and I know because he listens to this podcast, born in like, so he they will did hear think, this. When Big T was – how many years older than Big T is me? He's like 38. So I feel like around, yeah, I don't know, yeah. older people could think it's a swear for whatever reason. 
I don't think it's a swear. Though. Kirky's uh, older, though. He doesn't think I mean, it's a, it's a we had some mixed there. views in the chat. Some people it's, were with me and some What, you think so there's like you. some some Jesus freak thinks it's a, it's a swear? Or no, like, he's not even saying like the, the – like the, the like – Darn it. We got to say darn it. We got to say darn it. Damn. He, I'm just saying damn. The word damn. Like if I it's say not damn. A no. It's definitely no. It's not a swear at all. I, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's just because we're from Boston and we, we have freaking potty mouths as is, but like it, it's not a swear. I was I, told I, it was a swear when I was a kid, but I don't consider it one myself. I can no, see can. like if you said nope. it in a way where it's like damn you. Like to your parents or something. No, there's like that. nothing. Maybe, there's nothing. But... There's nothing wrong. You can say it wherever to whoever you want. You I'll can say, you. damn it, right. damn it. Damn it. If so you say easy. now, some people get I'm upset glad. when you say God damn it, because you're like that, see, you're that's going, different. No, I agree with you. That's different. But you know, damn is not a swear. All right. We're, that was All easy. Right. We see, just wasted... T, you're wrong. Sit back down, enjoy the podcast now. I'm gonna, you know, enjoy giving some winners, but Hit, hit the work and count, count, and count your money. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Count your count your winnings. Soccer winnings, college football, friggin' tennis, NASCAR, all the other crap you win. Yeah, yeah. let me tell you something, Big T. I'm sick of seeing your goddamn screenshots. You know, <laughs> you know, like up. I up actually the love seeing the goddamn up, screenshots. Up the minimum. So keep going. It's, just, it's, it's getting annoying at this point. Keep you the screenshots rolling, Tony. Doing? I love those. All right, let's go. Okay, it's week twelve. We've no got way Big T listens to this show. By the way, just throwing it out there. What do you mean? I I talk to him. I talk to him all the time. He's like, I gotta go. I gotta go listen to the Turning Takes Pod. Yeah, he, 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 yeah, he, he sends me a balls, message dude. too. He, no Big way. T, yeah, Big no, T watches everything. I talked to him podcast. too about it. I also talked to him. What about uh, Schneider getting a, uh, uh, you know, Superman getting on the ETR? Uh, Oh, um, I did hear about this. Yeah, yeah. This. Wait, what happened? <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, we'll talk later. We're, we got a show to do, Bobby. Let's focus. <laughs> what happened? Snyder what? Nothing. We'll, we'll, we'll Nothing bad. Talk. Nothing Snyder's bad. Snyder's my guy. What do you do? He didn't do anything wrong. All right. He won, Week he won 12. Somebody already said that it's painful <laughs> to listen to us and and uh, and that, uh, that it was awkward to listen to our show a couple weeks ago. So we this is going to be even worse for that poor guy. It was like oh, yeah, it was like sorry. midnight, and dude. When did that? We that was the latest right. ever did a show the other week. Yeah. Okay, week twelve. You got it. Yep. NFL week twelve. Eleven games. No fifty point totals. We do have three that have decently sized ones with the the Chargers at Arizona, forty eight and a half. We've got the Raiders at Seattle, forty seven and a half. We've got Houston at Miami. 47 and a half. The thing about the Miami, Miami is a massive favorite, 14 point favorite. Um, next, other games there that uh, have decent totals are Cincy at Tennessee. Well, actually, they're not even decent, down to 43 and a half, low. Baltimore at Jags, low, and then just really low. I want to see what the total is on the Chiefs game. Um, I know they're ma- massive favorites. Uh, 45 and a half for the Chiefs game. Is that correct? What, what we're showing here? Uh, that's what it opened, 42. It's down to 42 points. So the Rams at KC, that's because of the quarterback controversy. But KC is uh, 15.5-point favorites in that game. So, you know, so this is what stands out to me this week um, is that we've got a bunch of value again, like different areas. We've got, you know, obviously running back. We've got like a million situations of like backup running backs and, and good play running backs and cheap running backs. However, a lot of it's going to come with some chalk. Um, quarterbacks, we've got, we don't have to worry too much about over, you know, extreme high end, but they're all easy to kind of fit. Cause like if we want to, I mean, if we, if we want to play 8,200 for Mahomes, we can. We don't have to if we want to, but we got, we've got other options. We've got, Two at 69. We've got Herbert at seven. We've got Burrow at 67. We've got Geno Smith, who's going to be chalk at 6K. We've got Bobby's boy, Tom Brady at 5,800. We've got a lot of, a lot of areas. We've got Lamar. Let me do it, by the way. I already know you're going to. Um, we've got Lamar at 8K. You play Tom Brady on this slate, Bobby. I'm driving to your house and slapping you across the face. Okay. Wow. We'll stay away from Brady. Um, we got Lamar. No one's going to play Lamar. Maybe they shouldn't play Lamar, but we'll, we'll get into that. Um, the wide receivers, we've got top end, high end plays that, you know, but we also have like a solid mid range, like Keenan Allen's back from the dead. 
full go this week, 6,100. Um, we've got like some cheaper, decent plays, like because it's a good spot with Garrett Wilson at 4,300 um, against the, the Bears. And, you know, that is a legit wide receiver one. We'll see how that offense does. But, um, you know, things that make it play. And then we've got like the high end at Tyreek Hill. 8,800, but they're massive favorites. We've got Devontae Adams, who just showed people he's still still the man last week. I mean, massive three massive games right in a row, back to back to back. I don't see why he doesn't have another one here against Seattle, uh, 8,600. So, And then we've got like a really strong mid-range. So basically we can kind of build however we want to this week. Um, is how, And so it's back to like a uh, – it, and it's kind of interesting because it's kind of tough with these – high to high uh favorites like do we you know i'd always get into this game script thing like oh mahomes is gonna blow them out and he's not gonna crush but you know he's already had two game two blowout games this season and he scored 30 plus in both of them so it's like you know we can second guess that all we want but like good plays are gonna be the good plays so that's how it looks to me so far how are you guys what are, what are your feels on this one whoever yeah so i think that like running back, all this news kind of opened up and running back, the hit rate's kind of been pretty high and we're getting all these running backs under 6K. I think that's where the slate kind of starts. And then in terms of the quarterbacks, it's weird because we don't have these high totals. A lot of these mid-range guys, I think, are in better spots than guys we'd usually pay up for. I, I've loved Mahomes this year, but I don't think Mahomes is going to be pushed really by the St. Louis Rams team. So I don't really have much interest there. Where'd more, you get that word pushed from? Just always DFS. Uh, just checking. Why, what are you implying, Kirk? You no, push, just asking. Just asking. What are you implying, Kirk? What, what, Not, where nothing at all. I was just asking. It's, uh, where are you, like, where are you going? Okay. Uh, I see what you're doing. I just, just curious. <laughs> Kirk, you pushing your buttons here, Bob? I think so. I think he's pushing my buttons a little bit. I kind of like it. Let's see how you react to it. I mean, uh, it, it. he's going to end up screaming and want to fight me in five <laughs> minutes. We've, already, we've been down this road before. Uh, 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 what, yeah. What's up with you, J JSU? You, you you made him lose track of what he was even saying. Yeah, he's he's, he's so saying. he's tripping over his own feet right now, poor Bobby. But um, yeah, I so. If we're start, I mean, I don't know if we're starting at quarterback, but just quickly from like last slate to this slate, I think if you're looking at the quarterback position, I I see a few guys where I'm like, okay, these spend ups are like the clear guys if I'm spending up. But my my issue with this slate is going to be we got all these like cheap guys that we can spend down for, guys that are starting for the first time, like. The Rams aren't coming out and saying who's going to start, but I assume Bryce Perkins starts. That's just my guess. They said he was taking first team reps. I don't see why they wouldn't let him start too. Wolford's terrible. Uh, Perkins can run, so I think that's kind of interesting for the Rams, and they're going to be down the whole game. So put all those things together. Yeah, they probably Bobby, you're probably right. They probably won't push Mahomes in the Chiefs that much, but at five K. You don't need a ton out of that quarterback. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of stinks that we don't have the confirmation right now. I, I'm going to go under the assumption, though, it is Perkins. I do think for tournaments, if I was spending it down, too, he would be the one just because he does have big rushing upside. Can't throw. Who are you stacking him with, though? You don't stack him. You play him naked. You can't okay. throw. He's a runner. And if we played – if you guys played preseason, like – all he can do is run. <laughs> like, that's what he does. So I would stack him with nobody, and I would just play him naked. Um, you can I mean, play him like actually so with Kelsey on the other side. Just play Perkins and then play Kelsey on the other side. Your spend down at quarterback gets you the spend up at tight end. Boom. And then you kind of just go from there. Don't play anyone else from the game. But I don't know. I the guys for me, though, if I'm looking at the quarter position that I want to be really overweight on in tournaments, there's three guys. It's Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, which I love when I'm when I'm liking both sides of the quarterbacks up from one game, a game that has a nice close spread. It's only two and a half. Decent total in that one, too. You've got some really good plays in there. I, I think Herbert – and Kyler Murray make a lot of sense. You're getting Kyler at the lowest price I think he's been all year. 
and he's been terrible all year, by the way. And he's still putting up decent fantasy performances, which is weird because I haven't played him all year. Like not one time, I don't think. Maybe, maybe once. I can't remember. Either once or never have I played Kyle Murray this year. And I'm actually surprised because I've watched all of his games that he's actually had some of these performances in the 20s for fantasy-wise because he's been terrible. So uh, I think this is where you can get a piece of him. I think the Chargers will push – you like that, Kirk? We'll push the Air, uh, the Arizona team and uh, force them to score a little bit. So I- I'm in on on that game for sure. And then Joey Burrow, I'm going to take some shots on Joe Joey Joey B. As long as Jamar Chase is confirmed in, I want to make sure he is confirmed in though, because I like this team, especially with them. I like T Higgins more with Chase back. I think it it just opens up everything for those guys. So. I like the passing game in, in the Bengals game for sure, and uh, I'll be exposed to those three quarterbacks um, as my main targets in DFS. Well, how likely do we think he's going to uh, – Jamar Chase will be back? I mean, no I thought I, I thought he was going to play most of this week, but – I don't know. He was limited all week in practice. Uh, kind of a guessing game. It's probably going to be a wake up and see how he feels type thing, right? I think what's he supposed to be back next week? Two weeks? No, I mean, I felt like he was going to be back this week. I don't know. They have him as questionable. He practiced all week, just limited, but. Yeah, I'm with you on Burrow. If he doesn't play Hurst, I think, at 3-4 or whatever price he is in tight end with T makes sense. Uh, P, with mixing out, P. Ryan, we've kind of seen him. He's already this – he's pretty much a scat back anyways. P. P. Ryan and Chris Evans. I really like Burrow stacks. You can run it back with Henry or Traylon Burks. I think Traylon Burks had 21 DK points on an island game the other night versus Green Bay. So he's in a pretty good spot. Uh Tua, I, I'm interested in Tua. The, 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 that's the thing with Tua, though, too, is like, is he going to be pushed, right? Like, is that – that's it, right, Kirk? Like, I don't know. The projection might be a little fragile, Bobby. Is that another word you use? Have you used that for NBA? It's pre, it could be fragile, yes. Yeah. No, I don't – I think it's fine. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know if uh, Houston's really going to give much of a fight, but it looks like Garrett Wilson's going to be chalk and – Guy is priced right under Garrett Wilson's Nico Collins, so I think he's a fine run back if you wanted to play Tua uh, in larger field stuff. Uh, and Tua stacks to leverage uh, Jeff Wilson chalk. Um, Gino, very interested in Gino. Very good spot for quarterbacks. Oakland gives up a ton of point, fantasy points to uh, the QB position, so I think he's in play. And finally, the fossil, the man, the myth, the legend, Tommy B., just we have abandoned all structure. You're not to playing this. Tom Brady on this slate. Bob. Can I just, can you play Brady on this slate? Can I He's right this the quarterback. Bobby, you played him every week, and the dude's I know, got I know, I don't twenty want like twice. I know. All right, we've abandoned all structure to this show. We usually start the show one way: we go running back first, quarterbacks, well, then wide receiver. Players Bob's just listed every single this, quarterback play on the slate. <laughs> I'll let you guys uh, talk. I'll just I'll just be a listener. <laughs> Kirkwood, will you help us get back on track right now? I've, I've tried many times, and I you know I push a button and people get flustered. And, I mean, he brought up Tom Brady. I don't know what to do on this show anymore. I mean, all right, the so, guy is never in the winter. He's not. He's been in the winter. I don't. Has he been in the winter? Yes, he doesn't like Tommy. It's Brady anymore because I don't know. The big T doesn't like him. I don't know what the no, I mean, it's like it's not about anyone not liking him. The dude is just not putting up the fantasy points. At what point do we abandon shit? How when do we get back do you have on? To click on and lose with him before we abandon shit. How, how you know much what? money do you need to lose? You know what? He looks pretty similar to Kyler Murray from a production standpoint this season. Does he? Yeah, he looks. He's got really one twenty-nine good. fantasy point game. Kyler Murray has. Hold one. on, time out. Let me see something. Real Has one twenty nine fantasy point game. I mean, they just look a little bit similar ish. Tom Brady ever have twelve rushing attempts? No, of course not. 
Yeah, but Kyler's not really running. He has a hamstring yards. injury. Kyler has a hamstring injury. He's not. <laughs> you're playing yeah, good. Okay, Bob. All right, All right. he's not going to start. He's not going to run. He's just yeah, not going to run. But like, uh, is is he going to run as much as he needs to? Like, who they're. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he will. I was trying to get this show back on track. I'm apologizing. Well, you to just you just tilted me comparing Kyler Murray to Tom Brady. All yeah, Tom Brady's better than Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray sucks. Yeah, Brady's he's better than Kyler Murray here. from like a, a throw perspective. I'm talking about fantasy. Yeah, but they have a very similar ceiling projection currently. At five eight, it's pretty good Mr. for Brady. Mr. And- Mr. Projection over here. Oh. <laughs> Can I do anything right? Like fuck. Defense. <laughs> Defense. Remember when you couldn't swear on this podcast, Bobby? <laughs> like then I found out Dan was a swear when I got on here. Um, yeah, no, you shine in defense. <laughs> so, so, no, all right. Well, I'm just trying to get some structure back. So let's go down to running backs like we always do. We'll go back and we'll hit quarterback you didn't lightly. Give quarterbacks. What? You didn't give a quarterback. Well, because I was trying to steer the ship back on motion. But oh, okay. okay. You know, so because it flows nicely into the wide receivers. Uh, so let's talk running backs, shall we? Uh, Jeff Wilson is going to be probably the chalkiest player of the year. I think. No. I think so. He's going to no. He has forty percent. Who was forty percent? What's his name? There was someone who was chalk. He's going to be very chalky, but oh, Jack and, 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 was really yeah. James like forty percent owned. And what is like looking? And Wilson has a Wilson has an estimated ownership at forty five percent, and it just and most are just got pushed out today. This is already this is only Friday. This is going to. What was Jacobs more. that week? He was like something ridiculous. Well, no, this Pollard is... was the highest, right? Wasn't he like fifty five? I'm telling Pollard? you guys, Jeff Wilson is going to be the highest. Okay, and if I'm wrong, you can you can come back at me, but I'm not going to be wrong. This is going to. He's a fourteen point favorite in the number one matchup against Houston at home, and Mostert's gone. It's his backfield completely, and he's good. Um, he already had taken over the backfield anyway. Houston allowed the most rushing yards in the league. 32nd in fantasy points allowed to the, to the running back. They allow the most fantasy points per game to the running back position. This is an easiest, easiest play. Home favorite. Uh, Houston can't do anything on the offensive end. Putting a new quarterback in there I don't think is going to help them. But in my opinion, he's going to be the chalkiest. If you want to en- argue semantics and maybe he lo- misses it by a point or two, then I- I'll be wrong and you guys can – uh, get on me next week. Kenneth Walker, right behind him, um, is a good play at 6,900, a little bit more expensive. I mean, this guy's been electric. The thing about him is the matchup, right? I mean, they are, it's a good matchup 22nd DVOA versus the run. Um, however, they're also 32nd dead last in DVOA versus the pass. Gino has been passing. Walker is a big play guy. He could absolutely get there, but they have many ways to get there. So this could go, you know, I mean, it's funny because Gino's going to be chalk. And Kenneth Walker is going to be chalk. DK Metcalf is going to be chalk. Are they all going to get there together? Maybe. Probably not, right? Like one of them is one, one probably going to blow up, and one of them is probably just going to be average. Um, anyway, J- Josh Jacobs was going to be chalky on the other side of that game, but now he's just gotten a late add to the um, injury report, and he's questionable now all of a sudden with an ankle. So that could set up for some more value. James Conner has taken over. He 96% snap share. Kyler has a bum hammy. Uh, The thing is you look at his snaps for, for the other, for the last game and he's only at like 76 or something. I forgot what it was, but that's only because it was a complete blowout. Uh, The 49ers just ran them out of Mexico. And uh, so he should, could, could have a huge workload, and this is another nut matchup. 30th in DVOA versus the run. The the Chargers, third most fantasy points per game to the running back position. 31st in rushing yards allowed. Smash them out for James Conner. Um, and, you know, it should help him having Kyler back there. Um, other than that, we've got another injury situation. We got Rashad White on, you know, is going to move up into – uh, playable mode here with Leonard Fournette doubtful, right? So if Bobby may not play him because he'll be on Tommy, but uh, maybe why would I not play a pass catching running back with Tommy? Well, the thing is, he hasn't been. Why would I not do that? Yeah, he's been, he, a, he's been a pass catching running back his whole career. Yeah, in yeah, college, he's like he's the worst. Take you back. He's gonna run in two touchdowns right on top of Bob's, right on Bob's 
forehead. Just run right over him. Yeah. You know, yeah, he, 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 you, can catch a, he can catch a couple balls too. Why not? So then, good. We'll see your Brady to good. He's uh, going to get white there. Stacks. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. Pass for catching you. running back. You wouldn't play with Brady. Yeah, has not luck. been a pass catching running back this season. He hasn't been, but he was in college. He, it oh, doesn't, yeah. it, it can translate. I, 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 yeah. Well, All right. Yeah. All right. So, who out of these chalk running backs are you playing? And then there's still more. There's All more them, chalk like, ones. There's La- La- Wilson, Latavius Lee. Murray and chalk. Kenneth Walker. Very easy plays. Latavius oh, Murray and Moore? P. Ryan are there. Matt Murray, I'm not playing. I can tell you that much right now. Yeah, there's no there's shot. No, there's no chance I'm playing that fossil. No shot. Kirk was Matt Murray? Uh, maybe, just because he's a tier lower in price, so if I need him. Then uh, I'll use what's, him his, no what's his price? You're playing Lat Murray over. Rashad I don't want to play him. He's 32 years old. I don't want to play him. He's what's he his has price? No, no, he's got no explosiveness whatsoever. He's at 5K. I'll play Rashad White over him, but like I could see will. myself making a lineup with both of them if I had to. Yeah, I, I like Rashad White more. I'm not playing Lat. I mean, Rashad, Jacobs. the thing is, Cleveland is this is the best possible running back matchup, too. It's, it is. A Houston and Cleveland are like the two best matchups. Well, that's the I mean, chalk at running back. All of them. I, I, Bob, yeah, I don't yeah. even believe at the end of the day he will be chalk. I like don't, I like, I refuse to. As, as current projections stand, he's going to be chalky. He, he's, he's just. He's going to be the guy. And just hey, write this down, Kirkwood, as, as you gave a take and you wrote your take down. And we'll call you out on it next week. You can write this one down too. There's no shot. Whatever he's projecting at for ownership, he's coming in in that range. He's going below that projected ownership. Every single person is going to be like, "Yeah, I'll be under on lat if he's going to be." So then maybe Kirky's right to play him in that situation. I don't know. I still can't play him, but I yeah, you're, you Lamar probably Lamar. are right. No, he's a volume play, and he's five K. So if like if I like I could see myself making a build with both of the five K running backs because I need to because I want to spend up everywhere else, you know. So, and, uh, so but I, I don't like it. I don't. Backs, I don't. I don't want to play. You're giving out a play you don't even like, but there's guys that you do probably like at running back. So like, I, like Jeff Wilson is is a great play. I, I don't think anyone's arguing that. Rashad White, like I think Jeff Wilson, Rashad White, and maybe I think James Connor is going to smash. J- uh, James Connor, Kenneth Walker, I think those are my four favorite running backs. I think James Connor, best running backs. James Connor is going to smash. I like, I like, I like James all four. I think Connor, Connor, I'm Connor play James Connor and a receiver from Arizona and just play Herbert. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, and you, and, and you can play the – I mean, Keenan's so cheap too. Yeah. Well, and I have Herbert. I like Herbert, so. Yeah, Herbert, Keenan I mean, Allen, and then – That's uh, what I mean. Maybe I'll D, just play Connor instead D-Hop of D-Hop and Con- D-Hop and Connor. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are the four best running backs, though. I mean, Kenneth Walker against Vegas. I think Seattle's up in that game. Especially if Jacobs misses or is limited or anything like that. They're, they're in trouble. It'll definitely make me like Devonte even more than that wide receiver after because they'll be trailing, I think. And uh, I'm not on Geno, so I'm uh, if I'm not on Geno and I'm not on the passing game, I, I should be. You should be on the running game, honestly, because you want that leverage. You you kind of are rooting for rushing touchdowns. Geno not getting as many, you know, passing touchdowns and stuff like that. Can we talk so, about Pacheco a little bit? We can yeah. talk about Pacheco, even though you interrupted me on Kenneth Walker. I'll allow. I it. think Kenneth, well, you Kenneth, you broke it down beautifully on Walker. I think Walker is Thank my you. favorite running back playing the slate. So Thank you can you. keep going on Walker. No, no, I, I was done. You like outside of Wilson. It. All right, I'm no. I apologize, JSU. You know, my fault, bud. Uh, yeah, Pacheco. You don't, to, you don't have to apologize to me. Thank you, JSU. What a, what I'm a nice not a softy. Uh, Pacheco basically, they're gonna get the ball. I know Kansas City's defense is gonna be chalk. I'm the defense guy, so I can point that out. But I think Pacheco at 5k, like, I'd much rather play him than Lat Murray. See some if they see short fields with Bryce Perkins, 
he gets a touchdown at that price. I know they don't uh, run the balls often, but with the spread being like 16, it indicates that they likely will be more apt to run the football. So I, I would have interest in Pacheco. All right, here's my – My one fear with that, Bob, and I don't know what you think about it, but do you think in a game like that where the spread is so high, do you think it's more like Pacheco maybe gets – a little less or they're more apt to kind of back and forth him and McKinnon more because it's not like a game. Wouldn't they want to get him going about? though? I feel like this is the game to kind of get the running game going. Well, yeah, but do you think they value with, with CEH getting hurt? Do you think they value him more because of that is my, my question to you. I think they want him to get as many reps as possible. This would be okay. to get his confidence up. It's a good spot. I mean, because I like your idea. I'm just worried, like, at the end that he might not be in the game if they're up, like. Yeah, so know. who else do they have? Burton? and um, He's a fullback, they... though. Yeah, so. I know. So who else is even is, – is Ronald Jones going to be called up? Oh, that's a good question. Do you um, think they activate another running back, Bob? Probably, right? Well, because the... They should oh, have, but I think, it's just, I think it's just right now McKinnon and Pacheco. Yeah, if it, if it stays that way – then I'm kind of I, I kind of like to take Bob because they're gonna have they're gonna have a lot of scoring opportunity. They probably will have short fields. He's gonna come in at low ownership. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that take. My only, I mean, Bobby, he already Bobby already even mentioned this, but my only counterpoint to that would be is that a he gets no passing game work, literally none. You need um, yeah. Literally none, zero and zero, and the zero targets in each of the last two games. One target the week before that. Um, however, and they are a passing offense, and you know, like Mahomes is going to run it up until they're not, and then they're going to lean on the run. But like, it's at what stage of the game is that? It's the nut match. It's a it's an incredible matchup for him, and uh, I get the play too. But I do I was I wonder what his price was on Fanduel, seeing if he was cheap. Okay. There's another guy I have interested in the five Ks that we didn't hit on. What about Foreman? Yeah, why not? Versus versus the Broncos. I struggle with him, which uh, the uh, so I like Michael Carter a little bit more, just because I think it's going to be dump off city with Mike White. But yeah, you, you know Foreman, Carter. I, like I think Carter's a better play on DK. What's Foreman's price on like a site like it's like Fandle? five 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 six? I like the Carter call though. With White last year, he had all that was like Carter's best game, right? When he was or yeah, yeah, game. he threw like twenty dump off, twenty like passes yeah. to running backs between him, between Michael Carter and Ty Johnson. Mike White did uh, when he played, so he definitely likes the running back checking down. Michael Carter fits perfectly in that role. Uh, I, he's going to be cheap. He's not going to be owned either. So all those things, put them together. Like, I, I, I think where you, when you get to a spot like running back and you've got so many good projected, but like also higher owned running backs, the condensed running back ownership, one or two of these plays, like Bobby brought up Pacheco. I'm bringing up Michael Carter. I think Kirkwood brought up the Ape Foreman. Like, one or two of these guys you should have like in your pool a building around. It's just a good idea. So you want to have a few of these projected guys that are your favorite. Like I gave out three or four that were just my top guys. Cause you shouldn't fade all those guys, especially if you're building multiple lineups, but like shouldn't be playing them all either. All right. You shouldn't be getting over under at the field on every single running back here. You got to take a stand and fade some guys. Even if you do play 150, you should be doing that. It's just I you know think what it's I'm sad. I'm sad that all, this week is going to be the first week that all these projection slaves stop playing Damian Pierce. Oh, Damian Pierce. Why people play oh, him every because these him stupid projections? Because he's got a high median projection, but he's on an offense that can't score. He's been the easiest fade every single week. Um, the offense is just terrible. Yeah, and and and, and nobody nobody can think. He's good though. Of I think he's good. Yeah, it's, the yeah. offense is just terrible. He's in a terrible situation though. I mean, yeah. it's good from a volume standpoint, but just on a terrible offense. Um, and when they're like clawing from behind and not even in it, 
But I have a play here at 6,400 who was the easiest play of the week last week. Now no one's going to think of him this week. And it's David oh, Montgomery. Yeah. David Montgomery again. And Justin Fields is either he's going to play hurt or he's not going to play. So that, I mean, all those rushing attempts, all those run, QB rushing attempts got to, you know, got to go somewhere, whether it, it just increases the passing game or more runs for David Montgomery. I mean, this guy's seeing an elite, elite snap share percentage. I think he's good. It's a tougher matchup against the jets, but like you're getting an ownership discount for sure. So I just think that game is a sloppy game. Even if fields plays, there's no shot. He's a hundred percent. Yeah, but so he so run. he's not gonna run. He's just gonna hand it off. You don't off. think he'll run with a shoulder injury? I, I mean it would be stupid because if he gets hit. Well, he needs to slide, first of all. He needs to friggin' they better be telling him you have to slide if you're playing in this game. It's like like Josh Allen. Like he's, got a, he's got a bump. Shoulder, Josh right? Allen, did you just did you see Josh Allen slide at all on Thanksgiving? Uh, Josh Allen never slides. That man never. Yeah. Josh Allen's also like six six, right? Yeah, he is. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. That's I don't want to tackle that guy. Yeah. All uh, right. Chris Evans, I think, is an interesting large field play if you take Mixon out. Is he active, Bob? If he gets he activated, I think he's active. Four K. We should talk. I I think I think that obviously Pirine's fine. Pirine's in a. Yeah, I, I would uh, take a shot on Chris Evans too, in, in like Millie Maker formats. Yeah, I'm with you, Bobby. I've always like I've always, like, I've always Ryan, liked so. Evans. He's a I good pass. He's he a can good catch pass. the ball. Yeah, yeah. Do we? So Jacobs ball. came up with a calf in, injury. I don't know if Kirky wants to transition in a wide receiver, but no, uh, we're going to Q, We're going back to QB first. Back to QB. Okay. So that's the, that's the normal order is running back QB, then wide receiver. So let's reiterate our, our favorite QB plays. Who are we going to bring up Tom Brady again? Oh, uh, God. I just want to hear him go into it again. Damn. Damn. Why? It's, swear, he's such I a good play this week. Twice for Big T. What did you say? I said I just said a swear twice for Big T. Damn, yeah. yeah. Are we against Brady? <laughs> I actually don't mind Brady. Yeah, I know. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Someone came over to the dark side. Yes, you just say you like Brady. No, I will not. I oh refuse my God. to like. Hold it's on. so easy. 17, just say you 15, like him. He's such a good player. 20, 11, 13. In the oh, rain? Oh, People 22, aren't going to play him in the rain? Oh. 22, 29, Bob. And then he has 14, 10, and 11. What a stud. I can't play. No, but he heats up later in the season. He's yeah, got his he, weapons more healthy. He's got his he's receiver. got his weapons all healthy. He's dirt cheap. He had a the he, worst part. Of he had a comeback he win. It's like forty to fifty passing attempts a game. <laughs> like he gets so much like volume, and he's putting up so many duds with like forty to fifty passing. He's gonna attempts. hit this week. I will not be on it. I'm gonna play white. I'm gonna play Mr. Rashad White. The Are thing you is, gonna lock is, White and Wilson. Am I gonna lock them? Yeah. I don't know. You're gonna be playing them pretty heavy. You have to, right? I think so. I mean, again, though, you know, you know the way I play. I'm gonna play like three or four of those guys that are highly projected, and I'm gonna fade the rest of them. And there's yeah. like eight or nine running backs that are all highly projected right now. And we didn't even get into the stud running backs that will get ownership just a little yeah, bit. So let's talk about Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler. Yeah. Um, I'm not spending up at running back. So, I mean, this is an easy one for me. Like, I think Eckler's the best one of them, but I'm not playing any of them. I'm just not spending up at that position. So, six, nine, Henry, Kenneth Walker's the highest I'm going. I think Henry and Burrow stacks, it's going to get expensive there, right? Like, unless you're building in Boyd and Higgins, then you play Henry. But if you're playing Chase, it's going to be tough to get to Henry. Uh, yeah, Eckler is very good play, but now you're adding Keenan back. 
I think yeah, but Keenan kind of hurts. Still, still don't have Mike Williams. Still don't have. Oh, that's a good point. So maybe it doesn't. It wouldn't affect Eckler as much. Uh, it is the nut spot for Eckler. I'm not. Pay, I'm with JSU though. Like Kenneth Walker is probably going to be the highest I pay up for a running back. All right. Since we're back at QB now, uh, Patrick Mahomes. What are our th- final thoughts on Patrick Mahomes at this price in a game where he's massive favorite? He's not going to be pushed, right? Isn't that the the consensus? I can't Possibly. play him or Lamar here. I'd rather play Lamar. Who's I have Lamar? a feeling. Okay, I, so I get it. So Lamar, this is his first. He's clean off of the injury report. So that's that's something. He's everybody wants nothing to do with him because he struggled for so long. But you can't tell me that the ceiling's not in there for him. It's not obviously there's not maybe he won't be pushed, as Bobby says, Bobby likes to say. But uh <laughs> um I don't know. I feel like when everybody's out on Lamar, that's that's the time to play it. I mean, this Baltimore Jacksonville game could go many different ways, and I think it could could be in, end up being pretty good for fantasy. But I say that every time with Jacksonville Jacksonville games, and I always lose. Yeah, so I, I play, don't I play Trevor Lawrence. I thought you I were on the Jacksonville pushing side because you're in a you're in a Trevor Lawrence so much. So I don't I don't like this game, so I'm definitely not going to be on Lamar. I, I agree with you from the standpoint. Yeah, he has a ceiling. That's uh, no doubt. We haven't seen it in a little while. But at the same time, the man has just not looked good. The offense hasn't looked good, and there has to be something to be something has to be said for the man. The man's number one receiver being Demarcus Robinson, Devin Duvernay, and like some of these guys. Like maybe it's yeah, not but all... you just play him with Mark Andrews is really what okay. But maybe, uh, my point though is maybe it's not all Lamar's fault, but that he's always struggled throwing to the outside one. Uh, like why do you think all, a lot of their plays Mark Andrews crushes a lot of games because they design shit over the middle to get their tight ends the ball. That's the design of the offense. That's where Lamar throws the best. That's why they do it. Like. Yeah, it's also because Mark Andrews is great, but it's more the design of the offense because they're a quarterback. It's to me, I'm just not paying up for AK when I don't like Jacksonville either. I don't trust Jacksonville is going to be able to put up points consistently against Baltimore's D. I think Baltimore's D is legit, so I, I I don't like it. I'm off both of sides of this game. I was confused by the Kenyon Drake play last week. A lot of people were talking of Kenyon Drake. I didn't get it. I, I'm staying away from all these plays. I, you, the only one I could see playing is Mark Andrews. Why didn't you like Drake? He's cheap. Huh? Why didn't you like Drake? I didn't get it. I didn't get like the whole volume thing. Like he's just You're all taking of a sudden out Edwards gonna get, and then. Yeah, but he's all of a sudden going to get 20 carries. Right. They're not going to use anybody else. Like it just. Uh, and then Justice Hill comes in and plays a bunch. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was like, "Oh, wow, that could have never happened." Like, and they got Lamar, who was struggling on top of it, and he runs ten to twelve times a game. Like, I, I don't know. Well, why? I, I don't understand why he would be this drop down, dead easy play because it was the matchup. Bob, was that it? Like, just the uh, matchup? he'd gotten the carries in New Orleans, so I figured. But I get it. Like they've never been a team to just like hand over. Look at how um, inconsistent the though it share is. Completely. Right. Like, I get. It's I get. So inconsistent. Saying. All right. I just Here's... don't trust that team. The only person I trust on that team is Mark Andrews. That's the only you. person you should trust. Okay. So who are your final favorite quarterbacks? Herbert, uh, Burrow, and. I'm What's back it? and forth. I'm back and forth right now on Kyler. I might just play Connor. I haven't decided yet. You'll have, to go, like to, you'll have to go Save to one of your sports and check out the player Kyler pool that I put up. And what are your what are your uh what's your take on G- a chalky Geno Smith? Definitely not. I'm playing Kenneth Walker. All right. Geno's ridiculous, by the way. Third in fantasy points for um uh, this matchup, third in fantasy points per game allowed. Uh you know, I was looking at pro football focus to get ready, and I, and I saw that 
Geno trails only Mahomes in passer rating. And I was like, how the hell is that even possible? Do you guys, did you guys see that commercial? Uh, there was a, I think there was like a commercial where it was like the three best fantasy quarterbacks and it was Mahomes, somebody else and Geno Smith. And I was like, holy crap. And they were like talking about how these guys have been crushing like fantasy points wise. And I was just like, Oh yeah, Gino has been doing really good this year. Like it's it's crazy to hear him though with Mahomes and whoever the other guy was. I can't remember the other top quarterback scoring wise, but it's just weird to hear it. Probably Fields. Might have been Fields, yeah. All right, and uh, Joe Burrow. Final take, yes or no? Uh, uh, I'm Burrow's my Burrow. favorite on the slate. If you take mix and out, they're just gonna throw. They throw the ball enough, anyways. They're just gonna be absolutely peppering or he's gonna be and honestly i think this game. tennessee offense can put some points on the board too yeah we think we think tennessee can push back right jsu yeah i i, I like them to push here i like them to push too trey push long it real good push it real good push it yeah it's a good song push it good <laughs> um all right that's quarterback. So now we go over the wide receiver. <laughs> there's no wait. Oh, you can't no, say that. You no can't say that on the on the air. Then beep it yeah, up. Bob's man. gonna get Do us it. canceled. Good job, Bob. All right. There's you no spend downs you guys like. Can't say that on the show, man. How do we even ed- edit that out? Uh, it's what am I gonna do? We already said it. We did. It's said. We're you moving did. on. Okay. So wide receiver. Keenan okay, Allen. So no be... spend downs. We're all just not spending down. Gino was the spend down, but we're not. We're all kind of. You're spending down to Bryce Perkins. I don't think we are. Okay. I think Tua is the play again. Tua like, looks just, like a good play. Like, you just don't play Jeff Wilson, the easiest play, and they do what they've been doing this whole entire season, which is throwing the ball to Waddle I and Tyreek Hill. Houston. Yeah, there's going to be no. I know you're going to have to like get as much as you can in the first half. Why can't we play I trust Kenneth Walker? More, I trust more McDaniels to just pound them in the on the ground. Like McDaniels is just gonna pound the rock, like like they did against Cleveland. You're gonna you're gonna be tilted when they're just running down Houston's throat. If Houston could score, I would love Tua, Tyreek, all those guys. I just don't think Houston score. If you think Houston scores, you should definitely play Tua. All right, are we done? Wide receiver, are you guys okay with? Yeah, I think we've covered the majority. All right, Keenan Allen, chalkiest, probably chalkiest play, 6,100. Played limited and had 13 fantasy points against the Chiefs. Looked good, had 94 yards, didn't get in the end zone, but that's kind of the Keenan Allen story for forever is that he rarely gets gets touchdowns. Still smashes on PPR sites. Um, no Mike Williams. Josh Palmer looks good. This game should, you know, should be some back and forth in this game with uh, this. This should be the the best game stack, probably, in my opinion, the the, the Chargers, Arizona, if things go right. So, yeah, he's there on the high end. We've got Devontae Adams that I mentioned before. I mean, the dude's just he's just a machine, just crushed it the last three in a row, had a couple of really off weeks. But other than that, it's been all smooth sailing for him. Just put up 141 yards, two tutties against the the Raiders, I mean, against uh, Denver Broncos. Um, We've got nothing bad to say. Seattle, this is a game that should have some back and forth points in as well. Uh, Tyreek is there. If, if you, you know, Tyreek can get there literally on two plays, basically, you know, two massive touchdown plays, which I think is very doable against this Houston D um, I get it. They're huge favorites. You guys also said, you, you know, if you don't have any confidence in Houston putting points on the board, sure, that's a concern, right? But, you know, Tyreek is still, could still get there. DeAndre Hopkins is the my favorite play of all of them. I mean, the guy's target share is just ridiculous. 31.5% target share, which is third. 47% air yard share. It's literally his – it's all him in this Arizona offense – I like Connor this week, but I think there's room for both of them to get there, Hopkins and Connor. Um, and, you know, people might go to Dorch with his banged up hand, I guess. But, you know, after because he stepped in and did everything for Rondell Moore, who's out again. Um, is Hollywood Brown going to potentially be active in this game? 
Yeah, is Greg Dortch definitely going to play? He's, no, he, he didn't he's, he's on the injury. Game. No, he's he's got a bum thumb, but he might play. He's questionable. It's going to be a game time league. decision. And then I think Brown, he's expected to be in there. We just have no idea what he's going to play from like a – he's got a – I would assume he's going to be limited, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. They're going to so need him though. I think – I don't – Greg Dorch, he might have a – he might be like the uphill battle – questionable to play type play you know what i mean like they might be trying to push him to play but uh, i don't know if he doesn't play they're gonna be super shorthanded they're gonna be running out aj green deandre hopkins might have 20 targets in this game yeah it, that's what i expect um and they'll all that, be like underneath stuff too, because you know the Chargers, like they're they're not giving up over the top stuff, so it'll all just be like nine yard outs. Um, and his price is a, it's a nice little bit of savings off Adams and Tyree Kill at seventy seven hundred. Then right below him is T Higgins sixty nine hundred. That's going to be you know I, actually I'll be interested to get both your guys' takes on whether Jamar Chase helps him or hurts him coming back. I mean, I think he definitely helps him. Yeah, all the attention gets taken away from him. All the attention gets put on Chase. The whole year, that's what Chase had to deal with. Double coverage, safety over the top, bracket, whatever you want to call it. It's just, I think it's so much easier when Chase is in there for Higgins to have, like, not just, it's not about more opportunity. It's just about the, the easier the opportunity becomes when you have someone like that where a defense has to scheme and game plan to try and take away, which helps you. So. But I, it's I also, it, it's also nice to be able to get 13 targets. Like he got last game against Pitt. I would rather like eight or nine targets and then be better looks personally than more volume targets. But yeah, it's interesting to me. What, what do you think, Bobby? Yeah, Higgins, I think the reason Higgins' numbers are pretty similar to Chase's this year was because, like Jesse said, racket coverage and the fact that Chase is bringing all the attention over to himself and then Higgins is seeing one-on-one situations that are more optimal. So, yeah, I, I like uh, – I think Chase being in helps Higgins. I'm in the same boat as JSU. I also, though, think – that if you play like this stack, I like Burrow with one of these guys. I don't like Burrow with both of them. I think you choose one. I don't like double stacking both of them because one, their prices are both up. And two, like majority of the time, one of them is smashing and getting there, not both of them smashing. One of them, both of them might do okay, or one might do okay and one might smash, but very, very little do we see both these guys smash, even when Burrow goes nuts. Yep. Um, then we've got a stacked mid-range. We've got Chris Godwin at 6K, a healthy Chris Godwin at 6K. That seems pretty good to me. Terry a healthy McLaurin. Chris Godwin at 6K? Yeah. I like that. Very healthy. Very healthy. And uh, Terry McLaurin, 5,800. Against Atlanta, I mean, number one wide receiver obviously had a rough game against Houston, a disappointing game against Houston. I was, I had him everywhere. That hurt me last week, but certainly going back to the well with him. Um, and then there's Metcalf or Lockett. Both of them are right there, 6,500, 6,200. Um, I mean, there's a ton of plays. Then we get into like that that other range with like the Traylon Burks, the Garrett Wilson. I mean, we can do whatever we want. Josh Palmer coming off of a massive game against the, the Chiefs, 5,400. Who, who's standing out to you guys? I mean, I think if you're not playing Keenan Allen, you should definitely play Josh Palmer. I might actually make a rule like one of those guys on all my teams. I think you have to make that rule. It's just, I, it's like, I think that's like the easiest rule ever. Like, you just – if you and you could, if you're 150, and like I would, I would honestly still think about making this rule. Just one of these two guys, 
Yeah, but why 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 not double stack them? Because they're both they're both no at cheap. least one of them on every. Oh team. oh of course of course okay I thought you were saying and obviously one. on your Herbert I wouldn't double stack them on non Herbert teams but on yeah, your yeah, Herbert course, teams yeah. I would double yeah you could definitely yeah. double. I thought stack you were them. saying one or but the I'm other. But I'm saying in general as a rule I would make it a rule you want one of these guys on your team. Yeah. Like on every team, every single team you build. Wow. All 150. All 150. I dig it. Um, I'm going to do it. I already marked it down. Nice. What else, where else, who else? And uh, Bobby likes Debo if he if he's healthy, right? Is that was it, Bobby, or you that said he liked it? I liked I'm Debo kind of dropped out now that he's not healthy, but uh, Saber's been pretty good with the ceiling projections, and Debo was the one that was sticking out to me uh, at the wide receiver position. I like Cooper. Anyone like Cooper? He's gonna be, I, I think, lower owned again. No one likes playing him ever. I like him at home. Why versus a pass funnel? Yeah, I have no, I have no, like reason not to like him. And he's still six. Like he's still like the same price he was last late. Like he's like six four or something like that. He got that second touchdown in garbage time too, right? Oh yeah. Not that it matters, but yeah. It's crazy that to think that uh, the the ownership projection is so low on him when he's coming off of a massive game. And DPJ too. Like, I think both of those are good plays. DPJ is going to be, like, unowned. Yeah, DPJ is not bad either. Because we don't need – because we have, like, the value now this week. So everyone was, like, right. scrambling to play him. It's, it's different. It's completely flipped, like, the slate and stuff. Yeah. But... What about DJ yeah, Moore? DPJ Where's he is at? a good pivot off of, like, Garrett Wilson. Like, they're right around the same range. You know, $500 difference, but – do we know where DJ Moore – what's DJ Moore's price? He's 5K. 5K, exactly. Yeah, that's a good price. Cheap. And uh, Dar- Darnold should help him, right? Jeff I mean, that's – Marshall's questionable, too, for that team. Yeah, this is the week to go back to DJ Moore, I think. If Terrace Marshall's out, then it opens up even more just – opportunity for Terrence Marshall Q tag. But like, look, if you're Sam Darnold, right. And you're coming back and trying to like, keep, keep your, your job. And you've got DJ Moore, like, and you have I mean, a relationship. Try and get him the ball. Yeah. You're just sure. going to try to, you're just going to try to pepper him as just much as you can. Yeah. It said he practiced in full though, Bob. So Terrence Marshall, he's questionable still. Oh, he did nice practice in full was... today. If he's sad, it'd make it even more clear, right? I think so. But again, why are we trying to play too many? I'm not trying to play too many Denver, uh, Carolina guys. So. Yeah, but it's yeah. not about that. It's about his price tag, right? He's yeah, five. No, I, I get what you're saying. Price tag, ownership, all target that stuff. share. He's all right in that, share. like that. That salary range is with all those running backs too. So he's pretty much a pivot at, at that point at our running back position. If you just think about that, sal- just with salary. If you're not looking at position, you're just looking at salary. I wrote him down. I'm I'm making sure to play him. Um. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I like Traylon over Garrett Wilson too. Garrett Wilson, if he's actually going to be like thirty percent owned or twenty five percent owned, I'm just that's that's too high for me. Yeah, but what about with Mike White though? We're not talking about Zach Wilson. We're talking about Mike White. I know who we're talking it's be a lot about. Of, it's going to be a lot of short area targets. I know, but 30-something percent? That's where what his ownership is currently? That's what I'm seeing. I don't know. Seems a little high, but... Yeah, that's high. Yeah, that's very high for a receiver. Um, you tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, though. If you're no, seeing you're right. Yeah, no, I see it. I know where you're looking. I, I get what you're saying. Other people got him down at like 15 to 20. At 15 to 20 would be easier, too. Like, that's still kind of high for me, though. And Jets offense with Mike White at quarterback, you guys are saying it like it's a positive. I get why you're saying it's a positive because he, he went there a lot. He, he, was, he was good with Crowder when he played last year, but – 
He was actually good with Moore last year when he. Can played. you get any worse though? I think, he, I think he had a nice game with Crowder though too. May, yeah, you're right. I think you're right. I don't. Whoever's I don't know the slot. Whoever's going to be the slot's going to be. It can't get any worse. Can we agree on that? Oh, it definitely can't get any worse. That's for sure. I feel bad for Zach Wilson. I don't feel bad for oh, him. Everyone, just, everyone hates his guts, dude. Yeah, look, I mean, I think he, he earned I mean, that. forget about whatever he did or said or whatever. He, he sucks. He's terrible. You can't George take, the, you can't take these. Josh Allen was a bust for like four years. You can't take the these country club kids like like uh, Daniel Jones and Zach Wilson and Daniel Mac Jones. Jones. I would I, much know rather what? No, I'll take Daniel Jones all day over Zach Wilson. Give me Daniel, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones has been in the league five over. years. Yeah, I'm just saying like these are these, the guys. You can't have these years. guys like leading your team. Oh, Bob, I'll take Daniel Jones all day over Zach I don't think Wilson. Zach Wilson's good. That's not him. Daniel Jones is absolutely terrible. He's nine touchdown passes on the season. And he's way he's better than Zach Wilson. Years. That doesn't tell you something? What? He's way better than Zach Wilson. So he's terrible, and he's way better than Zach Wilson. But, but Zach Wilson's, like, in his second year. Like, QB takes – it's been, Daniel Jones has had his five years. Like he's uh, he's played out his rookie contract at this point. Zach Wilson's like in his second year. He has time to develop. And he already lost his job. Yeah, I. The, it's, and the I, team has a decent record, and he lost his job. I know they're they're not good, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, just I everyone think the like team's actually pretty good, Bobby. And they're only yeah, what one was good. game back in the division. Quarterback takes a while. Like it does, you don't just st- who how many QBs do you see coming to the league and they're absolutely like the Cam Newton may, was maybe the last one. No, that was, okay, like, that's that's fine. Well, no, it was uh, it they was the guy to step nowadays they want them to step in and be good right away. That's what it is. Yeah, it's we impossible. Well, that's an impossible act. Is RG RG3? Who was the last quarterback that actually sat behind a good quarterback and like waited for a couple of years that you can remember? I I know who the last one I remember is, but who's the last one you remember? Like someone who got drafted. I, I, I don't know who you're going to say. I would say Rodgers is the last one that sat That's behind. That's the last guard. one I remember too. Yeah. That was a while ago. <laughs> But you just don't come like look at Allen. It took him three years, four years to get it together. It takes Even Pat time. Mahomes, dude. Alex Smith had a nasty season. The next year, gone. Not, I'm yeah, not saying they were wrong Holmes either, but it was year, just like right? he had to have he's done. Like Pat Mahomes is ready. Like gone. Um all right. Tight ends. <laughs> <laughs> This show is so <laughs> off the rails this week. Like, this is, this is crazy. Yeah, we didn't um, even get to talk about Devontae Adams being by far the best uh, spend up, but that's okay. I, I, let, spend off with I let off with them. I let off with them. I'm with Adams as the best spend up. As, I'm He's the best spend up a wide receiver. I think Trey Long Burst is the cheap dude. You Easy like Burt? And so we're all on we're all on the Burks train. Yeah, I like I like Burks, I like Burks too. I want to try and get on another Jets receiver that, like, I it, can. Elijah Moore had a, a good game. Elijah Moore played good with Mike White last year, if I remember correctly. God, I'm afraid to play Elijah Moore. He scares the, the crap well, out of me. There's only, you I think the go. best play with Mike White, like you said, is Michael Carter. I think it might be, too. There's only other options are Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. I mean, maybe Denzel Mims back from the dead. <laughs> I mean, I think Corey Davis is good. I just don't know if he fits well with Barrios will end up catching the short five yard touchdown. That, yeah, and it's gonna tilt me when he does yeah. too. Actually, but you're Davis probably is right. like a perfect pivot. They're the exact same price. He's one hundred cheaper. He plays the outside though, and it's gonna be Wilson in the slot. Yeah, that's why everyone likes Wilson. That's why everyone Wilson likes Wilson. Slot. I didn't even really yeah. have to look at that just to know why that is. Yeah. All right, you got more, or are we good to go to tight ends? No, we can go to tight ends when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Bobby, ready? Let's push the show forward. Let's go. <laughs> tight ends, Mark Andrews, 6,500. Clear number one option for Lamar. He's Travis- ch- he's going to be like the chalk to cash game tight end too, right? 
I don't know. I don't really play if cash. Chase so. doesn't play. If Chase plays, then like I just spent up to Andrews and cash. I would imagine if Chase doesn't play, then you play Hurst. But um, Kel- Kelsey's just twelve hundred more. But again, they're a huge favorite in that. Just twelve hundred more. Yeah, it's really you can you can you can get that pretty easily on this slate. Um, last week it would be 1200 more would be, it would have been tough. Yeah. It would have been, there's a lot of inflation last week, but a lot of inflation, not so much this week, but Hayden Hurst, you sounds like you really like Hayden Hurst. You mentioned him a few times. I like so. him. If I like him, if it, like, if you take, if chase is playing, I don't like him as much, but it becomes a very good option. You take chase out and he's three, three, and it doesn't seem like tight ends that great. Trey McBride at three, one, uh, is Cameron Brait is is Cameron Brait's in, so that kind of kills Kate Otten. Moreau, three, four. I don't know. I think my favorite's easily Andrews. Yeah. He hasn't done anything in a few weeks, but um clean bill of health and a good spot against the Jags. There's absolutely no they they're all their receivers are out, right? Yeah, no comp shouldn't be much comp. I mean it's always him. He's the first option regardless, even if yeah. there are all there. Um I don't know. Yeah, you're right. There's not much to really like on the cheaper stuff. So there's Andrews and Kelsey and then there's like a bunch of like cheap game guys that you don't really feel good about. Hayden Hurst, I get it without Jamar Chase. Foster Moreau, Tyler Conklin, Noah Fant, Trey McBride, Dolchich. I don't know. None of these guys stand out to me. Gerald, I would like the idea of Gerald Everett. Uh, Arizona is the nut matchup for tight ends. He's been battling a groin injury. He hasn't really done anything for a few weeks, but um, that that's a that's a way to play that game. You think he'll get owned much, JSU? Uh, Gerald I don't Everett? think he'll have that much ownership. Um, and you're right. It's the nut spot. Yeah, I, I like Gerald Everett, and you can add him to your Herbert stacks. Definitely can play some Gerald Everett. I think Trey McBride, go right back to him. He's still cheap. Um, it looks like they're going to be down even more weapons. So, I mean, we, we make jokes like Hopkins going to get 20. T- like, these targets are going to somebody, and these guys are hurt. Rondell Moore and, and or Greg Dorch because they play, like, the same role. They command a lot of targets in this offense. So with if both of them are out, I mean, I think the running back's going to get more work in the passing game. D-Hop will definitely get his, but someone else is going to get it, and it could easily just be the tight end and Trey McBride. So I'm going to definitely be heavier on, on him. He's 3-1, too. He's still super cheap. Um, so, yeah, like him, like Everett. Um, I think you can – like – you guys were saying you can definitely spend up for like Andrews or Kelsey anytime if you want to do that. Got no issues there. And Hayden Hurst, because I'm on Joe Burrow, I'm, I'm going to like some Hayden Hurst. Um, trying to see if there's like anyone else. So there's a low owned play that sticks out to me, but unfortunately, the reason I liked him last week was because he, for the first time in like the entire NFL season, he was off the injury report. But now he's back on the injury report with ribs. Uh, so, uh, he had a rib injury, um, which is Logan Thomas. Like he was peppered in that game. He got, you know, six targets, five, 65 yards. Like he was like warming up and looking good. And then, uh, you know, picks up another, uh, a rib injury here when he was, th- when he's three K and no one's going to play him. I really like the LT goal. I didn't realize he was utilized that much. LT he gets a nickname. He's, he like has, he's had a nickname. I don't That's, know if he gets – you're right. never heard anyone call him LT. It's, you've heard people call him LT. It's His name's Logan Thomas. I know the he's not the Tomlinson? LT. But... You mean that that LT? It's, I was thinking of Lawrence Taylor. but Lawrence yeah. Taylor, another one. Yeah. You can't just be giving LTs away like it's a, a damn cookie. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's it, – LT, you can't be calling Logan. Logan Thomas can't have a nickname. Okay. You not going to argue. You won the argument. Can't do it. H squared? We'll just call him Logan. H squared. There you go. Call him Logan. All right. So my takeaway here. Oh, my God. So tough matchup. 
but George Kittle goes bonkers, which I knew he would. I played him on captain and I'd showed on slate because he he's like the number one selling uh, Mexican jersey in Mexico. One, he's in the top five jersey sales, so I like knew there. So that's why you captain him. That was the rationale. No, that was just a piece of it. Okay. There was a there was other reasons that he's you know had been. He was a good play. Yeah. Um, I capped them too. I capped them. I did it too, but I'm, I just I didn't know that was top five. They, they, and you and you can tell. I mean, that's why they they gave him that second touchdown. Like he, they didn't need. Normally, they don't. They take the foot off with him and like save him and make sure he's not getting injured. And when they're up big, and they just let him let him go in that game. Well, but, uh, I mean, also. Arizona missed how many tackles on both? Yeah, sides? I know. Well, at that yeah. point in the game, they didn't even want to tackle him. That even was that the thing. first touchdown. You see him just like he just wide open, like went up. He, he caught the ball. He's open. One guy came at him, and he just went up and around, and the guy just whiffed and scored. Like, like but the easy. last one was hilarious. It was like they no one wanted to tackle him. It was like or literally out of bounds, like, even Kirkwood. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, nothing. I, like, because I, I was like, there's no way, and I, I was I was happy, you know, I had him in captain. Um, but, uh, anyways, I mean, it's also the nut matchup against the Cardinals. We're back to that tight ends against the Cardinals. Um, one last, uh, can't really play commit now. I can't feel good about their quarterback situation. Doesn't right. Semien, doesn't Semien kind of help these pass catchers a little bit? I don't think so. Like he, if you looked last year, like all these short area pass catchers for the Saints caught passes. I don't. I don't think he's. I yeah. I, I guess it's too thin. I don't know. Maybe a volume. Maybe. Yeah. All right. We're now at our favorite section of the show. Favorite segment. It's an elite Bobby segment. Gomes, Bobby Gomes DFS breakdown, defensive breakdown of the defenses. You can, you can Wait, start so it with. We need your take on the Chiefs. This is gonna like for me when. I mean, this is the most obvious defensive play ever, but, like, I don't know. Give me your take on playing an incredibly chalky Kansas City Chiefs defense. Yeah, chalk defense is usually Xing, but not so much this year. Like, I've played it. I'm going to play it here. I don't see why not. It's a very good spot, and you can correlate it with Pacheco to make it different if people are going to play guys like Lat Murray and stuff. So, I don't mind. That's how you're getting to differentiate it that way. Um, but, like, to give just one that I think is interesting is the Panthers D uh, versus Lat Murray and Russell Wilson at 3K. That would be my pivot. And if I'm not playing the Chiefs heavily, it's a defense I'd consider a bunch. So we got two. Well, the Chiefs is, like, it's, it's, it's very obvious. You got your own segment. You can only come up with two defenses. That's <laughs> what I don't like uh, I like twenty-two or something. Twenty, whatever many teams are on the slate. The problem like is the, the reason why this became a thing is because like last year we did the RPS show on Saturday nights, so I was like ready to go. When I look at this, I'm just like just starting, you know. It's like all right, Bob. Yeah. Excuses. Let's let we don't we don't need excuses from you. All right, we just want winners. No Jets D is excuses. legit. I'll tell you what, the Jets D is legit. We can uh we can look up the uh the D line mismatches, Brandon Thorne or whatever. What does he what does he say? Uh, I don't know. Jets D Michael Carter. He, he put me on the Steelers, so I'm never going back to that guy ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give and all these, these all these projection yeah. slaves, they all played Washington. I, I nailed the, the two differentiators for players on Yahoo last week, but I had no chance because I didn't play. Everyone else played the Commander's D, and I had Pittsburgh D. And they uh, they nuked Washington the slaves. Was Just the great. I had I had JT over over Pierce. Uh, I had uh, – and everyone else played Court and Sutton, and I had Devontae Smith. I outscored both of those, and then I just was drawn dead because of the D. So Crazy. everyone's going to play Jeff Wilson. I think the Dolphins' defense, if you're playing Jeff Wilson, Dolphins' defense is going to be low-owned. No one's going to want to pay up for him. They haven't been good to all year, but they get Kyle Allen in this Houston offense. I – 
I just think it makes a lot of sense in tournaments. Take a shot, pay up for some D. You got value at other spots too, so you can get up there in some lineups and just take some shots. Correlating with your running back, you know he's going to be very popular too. So put the D with them, which normally people correlate the the defense and the running backs, but you're going to get this D low on because it's just too expensive. People don't want to pay up for 3,900 Miami Dolphins. They want to pay up for good defenses only. So I think it makes sense in tournaments uh, to, to pay up a little bit and get some shares of Miami. You know what I just remembered? Uh, Byron, Byron Murphy's still out, right, for uh, Arizona? Uh, they're, they're a shot. He's like their only good defender. The, the back, right? Yeah, I'm, he's um, he's their shadow corner. Um, yeah, the cornerback, right? He's a cornerback, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's out again. Yep, he's out again. Yeah, yep. I just so it makes me like the Chargers more. I'm gonna eat. I think I'm just, I think I'm just in on the Chargers. That's what I'm. Byron gonna Murphy's the guy who was shutting ever all the wide receiver ones down at the beginning of the year. Right? Yeah, he's still out. Yep. Um. All right, I got no defensive play. It's the only cheap one that's even showing is the Jags. Didn't you say the Jets? I do. Yeah, I like the Jets, but yes. I'm trying to find a cheap, a cheap one. I got no other ones, is what I'm saying. I got nothing. I don't see anything else. I don't know. Well, good thing it's not your segment. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your favorite stacks: single entry, large field. Take it away. Cincinnati. The Bengals. Bengals. Which one? Uh, with who? Higgins? Or let's say Chase is, is available. Chase is in? Yeah, let's say we'll give, give I'll Chase. I'll take the shot on Chase, Burrow, uh, Hurst, and bring it back with Traylon. And Bobby's the same? You're with you're the it's same? It's pretty similar, yeah. I'd say it's. You want to if you want. I like. Uh, I, I think yeah, Evans. And, you can even go Chris Evans. Yeah, I like Evans. Yeah, yeah we'll go in, in the long in uh in large field GPPs. What am I doing? Mine's just going to be Herbert. I mean, the other it's one. Not a bad choice. It's definitely not a bad choice. But Keenan's too chalky. Maybe I go Herbert, Palmer, Everett. Yeah, you gotta go Everett, your boy. Bring it back with D Hops and D Hops and or Connor. I like it. So we do it. We're ready to All go right. this week. We're gonna make some money this week. I fucking hope that. Good. Let's do it. I got no UFC this week, so I need it. I need to win. Is it is John Bones fighting Francis and Ghana? They're they're saying that. But no I'll way! Believe I'll believe it when I see it. That'd be yeah, good. That'd be. You know, they they keep teasing John Jones coming back. Oh, he's definitely coming back, but he's never been coming. You know, he's never like he's been delayed for so long. Like, he, is this, I think his last fight was like in 2015. And he's it? going up to heavyweight. And is that you know? It's because it made sense back then because he cleared everybody out. You don't want to fight Francis and Ganu. Come on. Oh, uh, that killed the uh, – never mind. Just thinking back, I just had bad memories. <laughs> Try to keep it positive here. All right, so okay. that – we wrap. We that That's it? How do I get a JS Jackson State University hoodie? You go on and support our man Dion and get one. <laughs> I might have to. Some guy pulled me aside at the airport and was like, that's my squad. I was like, yeah, <laughs> always got a root for Dion. He's like, you right, my man, you right. Dion's the man. I was no, like, you got to say better. prime. You got to say, you don't even say Dion. You got to say, you always got a root for prime. prime. I call him Dion. His name's Dion. Prime. Coach. They call him Coach. I, I call him Dion, though. All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, struggling along with us this week. Three tired guys? I, I think so. I'm tired. I don't know. I'm very are. tired. Yeah. I still have some energy. It's, it's past midnight at this point. All right. Well, that's it. I uh, thought Bobby JT I... wanted to do the show at pre-6 pre, uh, pre a.m. 
Oh, I was ready. I was Dude. ready. I would have got my oh workout in. I would have my coffee. I would have been ready to go. That's actually when I have to get up now, but I'm like totally delusional. There's no way you're doing the show. I get show you're with saying, you guys man. at 5 30 or 6 a.m. You guys would be just. You we're we're up at 6 a.m., but I'm not. There's I'm no up, but it's like I've already. I just yeah. got pissed in the face. I just, you know, and it's <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I mean, though. You guys would be miserable or zombies, one or the other. This is oh, we picked up that. the we're not mis we're not miserable on the show anymore. That was I feel like both of us are at a point where the sleep's getting a little Yeah, you better. guys push past the miserable, like the miserableness, you know. Well, when you have the you kid, are. you'll see how it is. Well, so listen to this. My brother's you... having a kid in like two weeks, so I'll, I'll be I'll be an uncle soon. Oh, nice. Congrats. Way. Not yet, I'm, but thank you. I'm a, Maybe our I'm kids a, will all play sports together. I'm a manny yeah. now. I, I I have the kid during the day now. By that's myself. it. I can't believe that you're doing that by yourself. Yeah, that is imp that's impressive stuff. So it honest. so I going into the week I was like terrified and like this is never gonna work. But so she leaves early. She gets home at around three ish. So I have them from the morning till three, and it's been like smooth sailing so far. But we'll see what happens. But. So we have we we found a nanny, if we need it. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how things go. But yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm a manny. Oh, it's congratulations, crazy. bud. No, there's no congratulations. It's you going to find out the hard way. All right, this has been week twelve. You'll be in it. Roto Grinders Run Pure Sports collaboration show week 12 is in the books. We'll catch you next week for week 13. Thanks.